Hi, I'm going to continue with the chapter on fingering from Bach's book Versuk über die wahre Art das Klavier zu spielen. So here goes paragraph 44. Gemal im Aussteigen hat bei Figur 18 in der rechten Hand zweierlei und in der linken Hand dreierlei Arten von Fingersetzung. Die nächste über den Noten und entfernteste unter den Noten sind der im 33. Paragraph angeführten Regel gemäß. Die anderen können dem ungeacht in gewissen Fällen auch gute Dienste tun. So, here's G major ascending. You can, so he says the one directly above the notes is a, a, adheres to the rule in the 33rd paragraph in the right hand and you can see that, that the tom is used after the black note, the B flat and after the F sharp and that the one in the left hand furthest from the notes as well the tom is used before the B flat and before the F sharp and you can see him there that again there's those versions that where the in the left hand the second finger crosses over the tom and the third finger crosses over the fourth finger and here I've provided a C fingering for G minor it's written out in three octaves but I'll demonstrate it in four octaves the, the fingering remains the same and again you can use apply the formula to come up with any any fingering that suits your purpose but he, the one I chose here to provide it 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 covers three things first of all it employs the entire hand so that element it's in incorporating the other incorporate it's also incorporating that element that the fingers only do the jobs they're best at able to do so and what you get out of that as well is that you don't get any fingerings fingers alternating between black and white keys and then the last thing is the hands are perfectly balanced and so you could see that if you look at the fingering you could see when when the thumb is used on the right hand on the left hand the little finger is used when the second finger is used on the right hand and the left hand the fourth finger is used when the third finger on the right hand is used to pivot then the pivot is as well used in the left hand and when the little finger is used on the right hand the thumb is used in the left hand and when the fourth finger is used on the right hand the second finger is used on the left hand and so what you get here is if you try it you you have a chance to discover the effect the hands being perfectly balanced has on your playing and I will say something about normal fingering or just just playing scales in general that when, when it comes to people explaining technique on YouTube or, or generally what you'll get is they'll they might play a scale an octave fast the 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 throw it off and and it, it's kind of like it's it's giving the it's giving off the impression that the reason you're doing what they say is for speed and so they play an octave quickly but if you're you know preparing for an exam or, or actually act seriously learning the piano you will you will the, the more refined you become or more advanced the, the, the problem will be like in, in, for in the case of scales will be the scales running away from you it's not necessarily the speed but it's the control 
keeping control at the speed. So you might experience that when you play a scale fast, you lose control, that it runs away from you, that your fingers arrive at the end of the scale before you do. And they don't necessarily, you know, they, they, they get more apart from each other as you progress in the scale. And so the, the, the thing is, and when you, when you just play an octave in isolation, you can play a series of notes in succession rapidly, but they do not necessarily have the qualities like pulse and rhythm and sound and control. And very, very often with speed comes, um, uh, you have to sacrifice on sound, on volume, on body to have your, your, you start playing on the surface, you, you, the, the notes get weaker and weaker the faster you play. So there's all these elements that, that, are, that you'll find later on that they're more difficult to acquire than mere speed. And so you might notice something in the balance in terms of the hands not running away from you. And, and, and the, the, how, how healthy the speed feels when you, so that could be a reason to tr try this fingering. And you might be deterred from trying it in thinking of normal scales, how, how long they take to practice and what a commitment it is. You will find with this, how you'll be surprised how fast this works if you give it a go. And you will be surprised that all those things that you would do, let's say if you're preparing for a grade examination, like slow practice, playing with the metronome, counting out loud, that you don't, don't need to do any of those things with the AC fingering. And if you play in the way that I've described, you'll bypass all those things and, and, and all those things that take months and months, they don't exist here. So that would be a reason to try the AC fingering. And I just want to point out as well, to, to take note, if you look at A, B flat, C, and the position of them, and the, the position of the black notes in comparison to the, the black note in comparison to the, in relation to the white notes left and right of it, that you'll see that the, the B flat is to the right of the left white note. And there you can see that I'm using the second finger on the B flat with the right hand and the fourth finger on the left hand. And then if you look at the E F sharp G and you see that the black note is to the left of the right white note, the F sharp to the G, that there I'm using four on the right hand and two on the left hand. And that will add to how nat natural it is. And you could maybe see in terms of the position of the fingers on the hand and the positions of the black key compared to the two white keys how, how that would make sense, how that would be logical. And as well, using the second finger and the fourth finger on the two black keys in the octave means I'm distributing the notes more evenly among the fingers with this set of fingering that I've provided. So they're just things to note.
Geh mal im Absteigen ist nach Figur 19 nur einfach. Man wird von selbst begreifen, wenn eine Passage nicht just sich so anfinge, was man im Anfange für einen Finger einsetzen müsste. So here's Figure 19, G minor descending. And yeah, so he's basically saying that um, you can, you know, depending on, on where, where the passage starts that let's say is in G minor that's descending, you would then see which finger you use. Like if it begins on the A, you'd use the third finger on the right hand and the thumb on the left hand. So that's that. Die Dur im Aufsteigen bei Figure 20 hat in der rechten Hand nur eine, in der linken aber drei Arten von Applikaturen. Die nächste unter den Noten ist noch der Regel wegen Einsetzung des Daumens und in allerlei Arten von Passagen, welche nicht eben sich so anfangen und endigen, wie hier vorgeschrieben ist, zu gebrauchen. Im Übrigen sind die anderen beiden bei diesem Falle besonders auch gut und zu üben. Die mittelste im Basse beweist den im 35. Paragraph angeführten Vorzug dieses Überschlagens. So here's D major ascending. So like he said, the, the right hand applies, complies to the, the principal rule and the one under the notes, directly under the notes in the left hand complies to the principal rule. And then what he says about the preference that's said in the 35th paragraph, that's that the second finger crossing over the thumb and how it's more reliable or useful than the third finger crossing over the fourth, at least that's what I'm imagine he's referencing there. So in here, it, you could maybe gather from that, that the, the one directly, the fingering directly underneath the notes is for musical ideas in the key of D major, which ascend, and that the other two are more for the actual scales or those that appear as it is there. Die Dur im Absteigen zeigt in Figure 21 für die rechte Hand dreierlei und für die linke zweierlei Fingersetzung, wovon jede in ihrer Art brauchbar ist. So here is Figure 21, D major descending. And I don't have anything to say about now, but I will come back to the, to the topmost fingering on the right hand. And here is the AC fingering for D major. And again, I chose this version. So it in, in, employ, employs the entire hand and balances the hand, but it's not the only version of D major that one can have with the AC fingering system. <laughs> Aufsteigen 
findet sich bei Figur 22 für beide Hände einfach. Wenn die Passage nicht just sich anfängt, wie hier steht, so setzt man in der linken Hand anstatt des vierten Fingers den Daumen ein. Dieses merken wir überhaupt bei allen Skalen, dass, nach verändertem Anfange, der Finger eingesetzt werden muss, welcher in der Folge über der Oktave steht. Bei der rechten Hand findet sich eine unvermeidliche Ausnahme wieder die im 33. Paragraph angeführte Regel. Wer solche Regel gut in den Fingern hat, muss voll Akt haben, dass er den Daumen statt des E in das D setze. Dieser Punkt macht diese Skala etwas verführerisch. So we have here B minor ascending and he says he had uh, the, it was unavoidable that he had to ignore the principal rule. And if you compare this B minor ascending with A minor ascending and E minor ascending, you will notice that the, the elements they have in common, I mean the A minor ascending and the E minor ascending that he says are the best. The elements they'll have in common is that the tone comes before the two or more black notes. So he, Bach remains consistent there. That is an element that's consistent in the fingerings, in Bach's fingerings of those three scales, which he said is, is the best. And what you have here is, if, if, if you put the thumb on the D, it doesn't work out with the fingers. Bach doesn't want anybody using the little finger on a black key. And so, so if you have the thumb on the D, you're stuck for fingers. Those three black notes make it impossible. So you're, he's, like he said, it's unavoidable. He's forced into ignoring that rule and then putting the thumb on the E. And so, and, and when, if you, so if you have that rules in the fingers so well, like he says, you, what, what, what you have to watch out for is you're going to be putting the thumb automatically on the D. And, and out of instinct, the reflex, you'll put the thumb on the D, so you have to pay attention that you don't. So that'll be like, again, what I was saying about the teacher who thinks they'll be the best teacher in that they make their students obey that rule. If their students are obeying that rule automatically, they're going to have problems playing the key playing the scale of B minor, because it'll always, they'll be forced to unlearn what they learned. And it's, it's gonna be extra trouble for them. And this fingering would be a possible option for, with the AC fingering system. The only kind of drawback is that the third finger is alternating between a white key and a black key but it's not um there is space between those notes and depending on the speed and you know how how much you need to conserve your stay loose and all it, it's not necessarily a a make or break factor but that would be the drawback of this fingering other than that it's usable with the AC fingering system. And here is B minor, written out with AC fingering. And I chose this version because it doesn't involve any al alternating of the fingers between black and white keys. And again, all those other elements are present, except the entire hand is not, you know, it's four fifths of the hand is used in a bit. And then the entire hand too. So, and I provide that so you get to try 
you, the opportunity is there for you to try it and, and find out what that feels like, what effect that has on your playing. And the five one and five in brackets on top in the right hand and the five one in brackets underneath in the left hand, that's, you could use that fingering going down as well, like those two, no, those two fingerings instead of the three and the one in the right hand, and instead of the three and the five in the left hand, you could do one five and five one. That's possible. So, and again, it's, you, you'll always be choosing the version that best serves the music and the best serves your needs. And what you like too. So that's there to try. <laughs> im Absteigen treffen wir bei Figure 23 einfach an. Man könnte auch mit dem kleinen Finger in der rechten Hand anfangen und den Daumen ins E und hier auf den dritten Finger ins D setzen, dass hier noch der Daumen wieder in die Oktave käme. Allein diese Applikatur, ob sie schon zu gebrauchen und nicht unrecht ist, ist nur eine Oktave durch gut. Weiter herunter dürfte leicht eine Verwirrung entstehen. So here's figure 23, B minor descending. And that fingering he talks about, so in the right hand it would be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 with the thumb on the E, and then 3, 2, 1 for the D, C sharp, B with the thumb on the B. And he says here that it's, it's only good for an octave. And if you continue, so that tom going on the A to continue that, that will cause confusion or it's, it's off-putting. And you can try that yourself and, and experience that. And I just want to say that that fingering he alludes to there in D major descending, the, the the fingering in the right hand furthest from the notes is the same fingering as that, that he says for B minor is good for one octave, but not further. And I just want to point out what is the difference between those two fingerings. Why does he not issue the same warning for D major descending with that fingering? And I would offer as a difference is that if you look where the fourth finger, when the fourth finger is crossing over the thumb at the, at the bottom of the octave, that the fourth finger is playing a black key in D major descending, whereas the fourth finger is playing a white key, the A after crossing over the thumb. So I would say that's the difference and with the AC fingering system it could there would be an explanation as to why the one is okay, why Bach doesn't warn about the one, but he does warn about the other, even though they're the exact same fingerings. Adur im Aufsteigen finden wir unter Figure 24 mit einer Applikatur für die rechte und zweien für die linke Hand. Die nächste unter den Noten ist nach der oft angeführten Regel. Und bei allerlei Fällen brauchbar als die so darunter steht. 
ungeacht sie auch zuweilen nötig sein kann. So here's A major ascending. And you can see, as he, he mentions, that it adheres to that rule in the 33rd paragraph in the right hand in that the the tone comes in after the black note, the C sharp on the D, and again on the A. And I just want to read a bit from paragraph 33 again, what Bach says. So Bach has the two fingerings for A minor ascending, and one he says is the best, and the other he includes as a warning because it's, he says it's fashionable here and there. And so what he says about the, the second version, which is the same as normal fingering, he says, Das Unnatürliche besteht darin, dass der Daumen in das D eingesetzt wird, ungeachtet, dass E mit zwei halben Tönen darauf folgt. So you can see here with A major, he doesn't remain consistent. And, and the fact that it's A major with the thumb coming in on the D instead of on the E, this, because it's A major does not make that any less unnatural as it is for A minor. So Bach's adherence to the principal rule undermines his consistency. The consistency see he's displayed with A minor ascending, E minor ascending, and B minor ascending. Here, that consistency is broken. That that tom cannot be where he'd like it to be namely on the E, it has to go on the D. And you can see with the AC fingering for A major, that the thumb gets to be there where Bach says in no uncertain terms where he'd like it to be on the E. Adur im Absteigen zeigt Figure 25 einfach. Es versteht sich von selbst, wie wir schon gehört haben, dass, wenn der Anfang nicht ebenso ist wie hier, in der rechten Hand statt des kleinen Fingers der Daumen eingesetzt werden muss. Und wenn eine Passage aus dieser Tonart mit dem Grundtone sich anfängt, anstatt 2, 3, 4 für die linke Hand, 1, 2, 3 stehen muss. So here's A major descending. And if you see the fingering for the, the right hand, it's the same as that fingering descending furthest from the notes in the right hand for D major. And it's the same fingering to what to the fingering he alludes to but doesn't include in B minor, saying it's good for one octave but not more, that it could lead to confusion for more. And here he doesn't have that, again, he, he, this is the only fingering he provides and he doesn't provide that warning. He doesn't say this fingering is only good for one octave descending. And you can see again here that the fourth finger, when it crosses over the thumb in A major, at the bottom of the octave, it's crossing over onto a black key, just as it does in D major. Whereas in B minor, it crosses over onto a white key. So I would see that, that to me is a clue of the evidence of the correctness of the AC fingering system and what, it, the, the, what it's based on about the fourth finger being best able to play black keys but unable to play white keys. And if, if you 
if you get to know the AC fingering system and observe in 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 playing in in r real life observe those ideas on which it's based you're going to start seeing evidence all over the place in support because that's what happens you, you, if you're ever searching for the right answer a great way to know you've found it is when you start seeing evidence for it everywhere. The wrong answer, you'll always be hard pushed trying to find examples to fit the idea. And, and most of the time you're gonna to have to manipulate information in a way that it suits what you're claiming is true. Whereas if it actually is true, you're gonna find evidence everywhere. So, and that's a good, a good indication you know if you want to know have i found the right answer well when you start seeing evidence to support it all over the place that's when you know you're you have the right answer when you when it when it's a real chore to find anything to support it you'll know you're you haven't found the right answer that you have to keep looking so and what Elsie says about using the thumb instead of the little finger that goes in connection with him saying that the, the thumb is used instead of the little finger and so it's you can you know yeah it's kind of obvious that if you s start on on c sharp instead of on a you'd play three two one and then cross the fourth over the thumb to play the G sharp, you wouldn't put the five on, you wouldn't put the little finger on the A. And when you, if you, you know, he says on the left hand, if it begins on, on the A, instead of using two, three, and four, you'd use one, two, and three. Well, you could try that. You could play A, G sharp, F sharp with two, three, and four. And then you could play with one, two, and three and you might feel, notice that it feels more comfortable, more secure with one, two, and three. And why that is, is because you're using the second finger on the black key, a job it can do best. And yeah, and, and in that way, trying that, you could get to know the nature of the fingers. And I would say that if you try then one, two, and four, on those first three notes with the left hand, that that will feel even more secure than one, two, and three. So that would be something to try. Fies mal im Aufsteigen sehen wir bei Figure 26 einfach. Weiter ist hierbei nix zu merken, als der Nutzen von der im 33. Paragraph angeführten Regel. Welcher die nun mero noch vorkommende Skalen, je mehr Versetzungszeichen sie haben und je mehr halben Töne dabei vorkommen, desto einfacher und desto weniger gefährlich folglich zur Übung ganz leichte machen wird. So here's F sharp minor ascending. And in the right hand, you can see he follows, he adheres to the, to the rule in the 33rd paragraph. And I just want to read that again. Das Unnatürliche besteht darin, dass der Daumen in das D eingesetzt wird, ungeachtet das E mit zwei halben Tönen darauf folgt. So, again, in keeping with that rule, Bach has to remain inconsistent. And that unnaturalness, which he states in no uncertain terms, he has to put up with it here. And, and just because it's F sharp minor, does not make it any less unnatural. The thumb on the A, even though there's the B following 
with two black notes coming after that. That is no less unnatural than it is in A minor or than it is in E minor ascending. And again, what you have here is he doesn't have box he says it in no uncertain terms and I'm very great I'm very happy that he did say that because he could have ignored that he could have followed the rule and 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 just swept that under the rug and said nothing and 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 I would have I would have nothing to go on but his instinct was greater and and you can see what a, like a, how good he is that he 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 says that even though it 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 causes it it weakens the rule and it it on it it empowers me that he said that gives me um something to um it helps me out in my argument ideally he would have the thumb on the b before the c sharp and the d sharp but he can't because he runs out of fingers the fourth finger doesn't work you can try it crossing when the fourth finger plays a, a white key and you cross past the thumb under that fourth finger it doesn't work and it so he can't he's stuck and here is f sharp minor with the with ac fingering system and you can see here that i use that the uh, the ac fingering system allows the thumb to be used on that note that bach would ideally have the thumb on because of the realization that the little finger is as good as any other key at, at, at any as any other finger at playing a white key so the thumb doesn't replace the little finger therefore the thumb gets to be there where it's actually where it actually needs to be where it's actually needed and the thumb with with box fingering applying the rule it's it's there replacing the little finger and that's like what i said about it being bad management when you take a a perfectly good unit out of the action and replace it with one that's no better well that one you replace it with is unavailable for the job it actually needs to do so you're left when that job comes along your your guy is busy replacing standing in for the guy you just sidelined and then the job that this guy needs to do there's nobody there to do it it's the same as the thumb being upstairs when it's on the black keys when it's filling in for the little finger it's unavailable for that place where it's actually needed and that as Bach has said in no uncertain terms that is or as he is expressed in no uncertain terms that is before more black keys when ascending because he's expressed his dissatisfaction or the unnaturalness of the other version where it's distanced from the black keys <laughs>
Fiesmal im Absteigen hat noch Figur 27 mit Adur einerlei Fingersetzung. Die einzige im Aufsteigen für die linke Hand, welche, wie wir im Paragraph 50 gesehen haben, nur dann und wann zu gebrauchen ist, ausgenommen. Wir werden aus der Folge ersehen, dass nun Mero alle noch vorkommende weiche Tonarten im Absteigen einerlei Applikatur mit den harten Tonarten annehmen, welche einerlei Versetzungszeichen mit jenen gemein haben, oder wegen Angrenzung der Tonarten mit den Kreuzen an die mit Bien noch deutlicher zu sagen, deren Grundtone die kleine Tertie von der weichen Tonart ist. Here is F sharp minor descending. And if you do compare it to the fingerings he provides with A major, you'll see that it is true. What he says that the fingering is the same as the main fingerings he provides. And there was something else I wanted to say with that paragraph that he describes minor, the minor, he, he calls the minor key the soft key and the major the hard key. And when I was in college, in a class we had, and I think it might have been psych no, philosophy and music, we were, the, it came up in a, in, a, in a class that, you know, how you describe major and minor to somebody, like to a, 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 a kid. And one of the things that came up was that you probably maybe is most known that how you describe to a kid the difference between major and minor would be that minor is sad and major is happy. And so that came up and it kind of, it was, discussed or shown how there there's so many instances of music in in major that's extremely sad and and other music in the minor key that's you know exuberant and and lively and so it was established that that description of minor being sad and major being happy it just didn't didn't cut the mustard if that's the expression and I just wanted to say that I, 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 I thought of that and, 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 I was, and I think that the describing minor as being soft and major as being hard, I think that's a, a perfect description. And I would have loved to have known that then and if I'd have put my hand up and said it, I probably would have gotten a, a very good. Because when you think about it, that describes major and minor perfectly. Minor, when you think of a minor chord, it is soft. And when you think of a major chord, it is hard. So I think that's a great way of describing major and minor. So if you were ever, if you're in that situation where they are discussing the difference between major and minor and wondering how you could describe it, you could put up your hand and say, minor soft and major is hard and you know, get a, a very good, <laughs> yeah. E dur hat bei Figur 28 für beide Hände sowohl im Aufsteigen als auch im Absteigen einerlei einfache Fingerordnung. Sie small im Absteigen hat dieselbe. Da jedem aus dem vorigen die Leitern von den absteigenden weichen Tonarten bekannt sein können, so werde ich die Abbildung derselben, insofern sie keine besondere Applikatur haben, als etwas Überflüssiges weglassen. So here's figure 28, E major, ascending. And you can see it's the same, the fingering Bach provides for the right hand is the same as normal fingering and for the left hand too. And so it, and it applies to the principal rule. And if you see the thumb on the A with the B following and two black keys coming next, 
I just want to read that again from paragraph 33. Das unnatürliche besteht darinnen, dass der Daumen in das D eingesetzt wird, ungeachtet das I mit zwei halben Tönen darauf folgt. Hmm. So, maybe you don't need the translation anymore when I, when I read that. Here again in E major, that situation where you have the thumb on the A with the B following is no less unnatural than that in E minor ascending, A minor ascending, which he is able to avoid, which he ignores, he's able to avoid in those. In B minor ascending, he ignores the rule in order to satisfy that, to avoid that, uh, the unnatural situation of the tome coming in on the D. And it's no less unnatural than it is in A major ascending or F minor ascending. Ideally, Bach would have the tom on the B, but again, he has no finger for the A. He is stuck. The tom is replacing the finger that should play the A. And therefore, where it's actually needed on the B, it can't happen. It, it, in an ideal world, it would be on the B, but it can't be. And I'd like to read on in the 33rd paragraph. Den der Daumen mag sich gerne na an den halben Tönen aufhalten, wenigstens ist diese Hauptregel hierbei zu merken. Now I think that that this will one one could better understand or read into why Bach says because the tom likes to be near the black keys at least there's this principal rule to note why does he say at least it's because when he was writing that, he knew of these instances coming up where that couldn't be satisfied, that he'd run out of fingers. He couldn't have the tom there where he wants it to be. So he couldn't say the tom needs to be before more black keys when ascending because he knows that he couldn't uphold that, you know, prequisite. Whereas he could uphold, or it, it, it might have seemed more reasonable to say at least afterwards you can put the thumb in. So I think that might give a bit more insight into the person, to me it does, uh, like the person, Buck, the person, you know, how he's thinking and the type of person he is, that, that he takes it seriously and, and the, the level of integrity that he has, that he, even though it, it weakens the principal rule, he still included that um, his instinct telling him what's unnatural about the tom coming in on the D in A minor ascending and that it's not as good. It shows that he cares about the right answer, that he cares about the subject. He's not driven, to me at least, that he's not driven by greed or selfishness or, or ambition or, you know, he's actually genuinely interested in the right answer, in the, the music. And it, to me, it explains the, the wording 
more. It makes gives more sense to why he wrote what he did there. And it's it all boils down to that mistaken idea that the thumb should replace the little finger. Not realizing the true nature of the little finger. And here I provide the AC fingering for E major. I'll demonstrate in four octaves. And you can see on the B, the thumb comes in on the B. I get to use the little finger on the A, which solves all those problems of the thumb of when when if I was to were to put the thumb on the A. I would have the tom wouldn't be available for the place where I actually need it, and that is on the B. So that might be, I don't know how it comes across, or but this is an argument as to why, as to how the AC fingering system solves the problems that normal fingerings that normal fingering can't solve. So here's E major. it for this video in the next video I'll have reached the end of the scales and so we'll have gotten through them <laughs> and yeah and then he'll be talking about Bach will be talking about general observations that can be made from what he's discussed with about you know the scales <laughs> so stay tuned <laughs> bye